So we're headed to the deserted Daisy Fresh laundromat. It's haunted. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the old gym real quick, check it out before we show the new state-of-the-art facility. Well, I must stop by here quite often. I'm pretty sure there might be a couple homeless guys that live in there sometimes, but. So when we left, this was Andrew's Jeep. Since we've been gone, somebody's helped themselves to the wheels, looks like. They didn't even put them up on blocks, they just stole them. Yeah, this was a two bedroom apartment, some vines growing on it now. I still own this place. I'm just not ready to let go of it yet. You know what I mean? It was such a pivotal place for us. This was George Valadares' first van. After that, Tad and Wayne also lived in this uh, van. Wayne's horse wouldn't fit, so I think he, he went in a different direction and now Tad moved on as well, so. Andrew Shed's over there still. Yeah, I'm scared to look in there. It's in about the same condition as when we trained in it. Hey, I gotta keep this ready to go, you know? We might have to move back in here one day, so. So the gym is actually only a couple blocks down the road. So it's like, I mean, maybe like a three minute walk. So it's not too, too far away, but that uh, just that three or four blocks kind of puts us like, now we're like right in the heart of Mount Vernon. Like, I mean, almost exactly downtown. So it's about a 30 second drive. You know, if there isn't all this traffic. <laughs> This is a high traffic time right now. It's 3.15, this is kind of rush hour. I didn't get a sign yet. It's still the same as the last place. We just kept the Y. Probably should work on that, but. Last time we were here, I was telling you that I hope this is the building that we could get. So we got it. This was the YMCA when I was a kid. Deep down inside, it's the building I always wanted to get, so just kind of held out for it. Yeah, little reception area. Show your roles always hooked us up, took care of all the guys, and they sent tons of stuff. These are the mats. So George built a subfloor underneath that. You'll see it gets like pretty bouncy. These mats were used in a who's number one. Dolomir uh, called us up and Mike Swain and these guys, they hooked us up with these mats and made this happen. Every day getting to walk out on them for the guys and the girls, knowing that the mat that's upstairs, that Jordan Burroughs has been on this wrestling mat and that Gordon Ryan and these guys have been on that mat, you know, that's incredible. That's every single day getting to go out on that. So, man, that's like a really, really badass feeling. They did the, uh, the wall mats for us, so that was heartwarming, you know, seeing like our logo on there and the Daisy Fresh and the Show Your Roll and then Flo and Dolomer. It's just all of these places that have came together and supported us and just made all this possible. So this is the office. This is where I make big plans for the Daisy Fresh team to take over. So this is a nice space where I can come in and think and get things figured out. Eviction notice. I'll show you the bathrooms first. They got a little stall in there, you know, looking all nice. Two showers. The boys laid the floor in here. They got the lockers, painted them up. I'm really proud of this part though. The girls' bathroom, you know, they got their stuff there. Re really proud of this one. It's, it's really, really nice in here. And you know, it's like their own thing. Before we had one bathroom, you know, so it's like the girls had to share a bathroom with the guy and you know, couch, he pisses on the seat sometimes, I think. You know what I mean? So it's nice for them to have their own little area, you know what I mean? It's like a recovery room, a couple massage chairs right here. So this is our little sauna. And then we have another infrared sauna that's gonna come that got back ordered, but it'll be right there. This is the part of the Daisy Fresh we brought with us. Blue mat, red mat. You can reach in here and get you a little touch if you want. This was the latest one we just won last week, Pan Nogi Adult. 
This is Pixley's Outstanding Wrestler Award for the NIA in 2016. NCAA title, some stuff from Couch, I'm not sure who this guy is. And then some old uh, belts and stuff that we got there, so. The upstairs part of the buildings is uh, the Wrestling Academy. Go! You got a little unfinished weight room up here, so. There's Chad getting swole. This is a reverse hyper that we got. I don't even know what the hell that is. A lot of this stuff, this is just the stuff that was on the wall from the old gym. So here's a little pile of metals. I'm not sure what to do with them yet, but just all the old pictures, you know, they all got all wet and stuff, you know, in the Daisy Fresh, because there's the, the condensation, the humidity that was in there constantly. But at the end of the day, like I said, this is, it's, it's kind of a building process. You know, we'll save up enough to where I'll let the guys pick like one major machine, and then we'll just throw it in and uh, just more stuff to add to the facility. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's not the most incredible, but for right now, this is my favorite part. These are the sticker wall mats from the old gym, from the Daisy Fresh. So we brought as much of that as we could uh, over. And uh, I like to come in here, you know, because it reminds me of the old school. But yep, a little strength and conditioning room. You can always find Tad in here, usually sleeping. From here, okay, we want to put all of our weight down on top of this leg and penetrate down here to pass, okay? Guys, make sure you keep your feet behind their leg. I don't want Spatch's leg to get underneath mine and come here because now I'm in this position, okay? So I want to keep this foot stapled behind this one, okay? So, one more time, you can just grab the feet here, here, turn the leg in, okay? He makes the face, push this down, all the pressure up, over. Into the leg drop, okay? Everybody got it? Easy as. All right, go ahead. Seven to help? So there's a lot more space, obviously, but with more space comes more people. I think we average around 50 to 60 people every single class at nighttime, so that is pretty cool. Even though I had big dreams about wanting to build a team, I'm not sure if I ever thought that we could have something as nice as this, you know, it's a really good feeling. I've had trouble with my eyes in the last couple years. My retina detached all the way. I had to get the surgery. You have to be face down for two weeks. You can't get up. Spatch and George, they, they stepped up in a way that I can, I'm forever grateful. They didn't know shit and they studied and they painted then they repainted, then they repainted again. And I mean, they built the entire thing. If you could see that what this place looked like, it had sat empty for years. It was mainly me and Spatch here, literally 20 hours a day. <sighs> oh my God, it's like, you know, the electrical, the plumbing, the mats, the laying the carpet, painting walls and shit you just don't even think about. And we had no bloody idea what we were doing. So we'd just sit down 20, 30 minutes a night and look at bloody YouTube and figure out how to do this shit, you know, lay the floor and put the sauna together. The reason that I personally myself worked on the gym was because specifically Heath did a lot of stuff for me. You know, he put hours and hours of his life. He, I don't know, let me hang around and taught me as much as he possibly could and he didn't have to do that. And I think it was a fucking small sacrifice for me to dedicate two months so that we can sit in this beautiful fucking place right now. You know, 15 years before I even got here, that man was thinking about a place like this. 20 years he's been working for this. That's like, that's my entire life. He's literally put my entire life worth into this. It's basically a display of hard work. It's a display of persistence. It's a display of belief in yourself and those around you. And I don't think it does anything but better us as individuals. I made a wish. <laughs> What'd you wish for? <laughs> I can't tell you. Look at her face when she throws it. <laughs>
<laughs> so we're in uh, Hermosa Beach, day before Nogi Worlds, everybody's just kind of starting to come in right now. So we got the Jacob Couch and Michael Pixley, Rosa all out here, and we're just kind of chilling out the day before. Ooh. Pixley's on tomorrow and the rest of the Blue Belt crew. Watch, watch Rosa get snatched on. Come on, Couch. I love it. I can hold it now. I know about these things. It's a game changer. I'm an American with heart, I think. He's gonna do incredible. Well, Couch taught me everything I know, so. He's not making that up. I taught him everything, so I deserve pretty much all the credit that he gets. Pixley teach you anything ever? No. Nah. How to tie his shoes. How to... <laughs> well, you see how that worked out. You see how that worked out, dude. All right, Pix, what about Jacob? He's gonna leg lock the dude, then he's gonna leg lock the dude, then he's gonna leg lock the dude. Murder. Straight murder. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> all right, why don't, why don't you him? All right, you want me to get him going? Yeah, get him going. Well, how do you feel about Jesus, Michael? All glory to God. That's right. That's right, brother. And what's your favorite verse? What's this shirt you doing? John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Say that again. For God so loved the world. <laughs> <laughs> are in Hawthorne, California. This is the PSFLA location. It's ran by Derek Featherston. This is a really special place for me because Derek, at one time, we only had two or three students, my brother and I, and Derek was one of them. Uh, my parents adopted Derek. They kind of kind of raised him up, so seeing him out here and what he's doing with like his kids' programs and just watching him have his own little thing out here in California and represent us as a team, it's really special for me. Good, good, stay on top. Come up to your knees, Adam. Let's go, three more. So this is the mural. This is actually the day that I got my black belt. So it's a real picture. Spatch, myself, Heath, Andrew, Dro, and George. I'm ecstatic about it. It really gave the place its own vibe. It's nice and bright and it pops. Like I said, now I got the boys with me every day, so yeah. <laughs> The Nogi World 2022 is up on us. It starts tomorrow. The blue belts are going to kick it off. So we got about uh, four or five days of competition. The returning open weight champions for the Pans are Pixley and Couch. Those are the big ones. Couch is a seated high to obviously win his division. And Rosa Walsh at Brown Belt. Rosa came off a uh, Nogi Pans win as well. We've won the Nogi Pans twice. Fourth place is the highest we've came in at Worlds. This is our first shot, I think, at actually bringing home the world title. There's never been a non-major organization, meaning uh, uh, gyms made up of, you know, a hundred different gyms that, that have won, I don't believe. So it's like, it'll be the first one if we're able to pull that off. So it's very, very exciting. For me as a coach, it's a major, you know, dream. It's one of the things that you want to accomplish. And it's on my list of very, very high priority things I want. I think we're going to make it happen, get up on that podium for sure. Jiu-Jitsu, we have the blue belts. The blue belts, is there anyone else? We have Mr. Michael Pixley, who's sitting next to me. <laughs> I'm trying to tell Pixley that when we get home, I've been taking it easy on him, and we're about to dust him up. Ready to go, get the first one out of the way, and I'll be feeling good. Let's go, baby. Michael, he's gonna try all deep half stuff. And pop them down. <clears throat> yep. Fuck his ass up. yep. Let's go, baby. There you go. It's gonna fuck his ass up. That's what he says. His words, not mine. Good. Good hand fight, Michael. Good hand fighting. Stay on his head, Michael. Stay on his head. I like it. Keep him in.
Take your time, take your time. I'm good now. I was hella nervous and I'm ready to go. Stayed in his face. Got the job done. Big money. Good outside passing, good outside passing. Nice cut, perfect baby. Good stick, good stick. Good, good, nice pressure Michael. You got the points. Body lock pass. Nice. Stick it, stick it. That's it. Stick it. Circle your hips towards his hips. Good, Michael, perfect. Doing great. Kind of got tired, burned my lungs out, not feel great. Threw up, not feel great. So I'm ready for the semis. Look at the size of that guy, Simone. That's a man. Nice, Michael, nice. Cool. We got the two, Michael, we got the two. Nice, good hand fighting, Michael. Good angles, good angles. Nice. Uh oh. I was ready to go, man. That dude was strong. He looked tough. It is what it is. Let me talk to my madre. Hey, we're gonna eat this dude up. He's gonna eat him up. Easy money, bro. All right, Simone. Finals. No gi worlds for Pixley Division. Good. Stay heavy on him, Lennox Lewis style. All right, 340, Randy. He's trying to push you out of bounds. Let's go, Michael! Let's go, Michael! Let's go, Michael! Brandon, stop backing up. Halfway, halfway. Brandon, you can't keep running away, man. They're going to call you for stalling. Hey, don't listen, Brandon. Brandon, don't they're going to call you for stalling if you keep running away. Don't listen to him. There you go, Brandon. Keep running away. Pushing three times. Keep working. There you go. Good. There you go. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Keep the pressure on. That's it, Michael. That's it. Keep walking him down. Keep walking him down. Keep cutting corner, but there you go, Brandon. He can't keep backing up. There we go, Mark. Work, baby. Let's go. Same thing. Stay out the whole time. He's got to come forward. He's He's backing up. Keep that pressure going, Big. Good match, Michael. You got this. Hey, all day, walk him down, baby. Hey, that a boy. Good shit, though. Good man. I feel great. The first match, I won by sub. Second match, I won 8-0. Third match, puts up the guy, hurt his leg. So he, he, uh, so he quit. And then the finals, I won. Ref's decision, almost got DQ'd. So <laughs> it was a good day so far. I couldn't do it without Heath and all the guys. They just push me every day. They show me everything I know. They keep me focused, so I give it all to Heath, man. You know, that day one in first place, how you feel about that goal? So the goal was to end the day at 30 points. We ended up with 20 points. But uh, really what we have accomplished is incredible, you know what I mean? We had Luke Rufo, one heavyweight, and Michael Pixley. So two 2022 world champions, and then Blake Brown got third place. So three medals on the day, and then Pixley just got third in the open division. So uh, four medals on the day, 
two world champs, I think it's a pretty, pretty solid day, you know what I mean? Guys, Coach, Coach Pixley's just gonna show you guys, snap down, go behind, all right? So I push into him, and then I snap. From here, I catch him in a front headlock. Chin, <gasps> tricep, shoulder, on the back of his neck. So from here, you got two options. We can either smack the back of the arm and spin behind, or we can take the hands on the chin, come on the inside of the arm, and drag. So I can pull the arm, and then just drag behind for the two. All right, let's do it. Clap one, two, one, two. Let's go. Let's see it. All right. Back up. That was not it. Good job. Little guys, who's got the best one? There you go, good job. Today, we have a mixed group of our really young kids. There's actually a large amount of four-year-olds that really want to wrestle, so even though they're too young, we throw them in here anyway. So we got a big group of like four to like eight-year-olds, and then a big group of like eight to like 12. Don't just push, don't just push. Push, pull, circle. So basically we brainstormed and we decided that in order to have a really solid high school program, then we need to invest our time into the feeder program. So we started the PSF Wrestling Academy. It all kind of worked out when he's got the building. We had the upstairs, the downstairs. So now we have our little army. So now we're building our guys, trying to get them ready for our high school program because in the end, they have to do well in high school to go to college, so we're trying to build this feeder program up to have one of the most successful teams in the state. Hey, that's the future Jordan Burroughs right there. They're both the goats. They're both nine years old, so I feel like in five years when they're all in high school, we'll have one of the best high school teams in the country. It's gonna be good. That's the idea? But look, you're like up there like Frankenstein like this. Wrestling stands, right? Wrestling stands. You remember that from two years ago, right? Wrestling stands? All right, you know that. He likes to stand up like Frankenstein a lot. I'm trying to break him with that habit, all right? So same thing, keep hand fighting, but don't stand up like this. Here, okay? Same thing, go. Me, Michael Pixley, our life is dedicated to competing professionally in jiu-jitsu and coaching these kids, whether it be at the smallest level with the little ones all the way up to high school and maybe even college someday. So we just took everything that Heath has taught us in jiu-jitsu and we just brought it to wrestling. And so far, so good. I mean, we've got close to 75, 80 kids signed up four and a half months in and things are going really well. I mean, we're having a good time and these kids are learning. They're getting better and watching it right in front of our eyes. So Heath's little process, it works. Wrestling in this community was ending, now it's completely reborn and we're thriving more than it ever has. So whether it be, you know, a kid that doesn't have much or a kid that has everything just hasn't found that spot yet, you know, and finding that for them and creating something for them to really enjoy and be a part of. It's a weird feeling because, you know, we did this with these grown guys at Daisy Fresh and now we're doing it with, like, kids. And it becomes a lot more serious when you're dealing with kids. So it's a really special and gratifying feeling. There you go, good job. It's gonna build up this team, it's gonna build up Mount Vernon Township High School, and it's gonna build up this whole entire area in Southern Illinois. It's a gratifying feeling to know that we're making a difference in the community. One, two, three, TSF! Good job, guys. Get out of here. Good job, good job. I'm, uh... A little sick, honestly. My immune system's taking quite a hit from, from coaching, but we had a dual meet Thursday, so I stayed up until the last second. Left the school around 11 at night, went home, packed, got an hour of sleep maybe, got up at 2.45 in the morning, drove to St. Louis, got on my 5.30 in the morning flight. My immune system's just a little run down, but look, this is the life I chose and I love it. I don't have any excuses. I'm gonna try and win this shit. Win or lose, all I can do is fight for my life, fight for my team, and give everything I got. But the journey's the same no matter what, whether I win or lose, so I'm gonna fucking go out there and put on a show. That's it. Nice, Joe. Hey, get the two, get the two. There you go, get the two. You gotta get the two.
right up here. We're gonna sweep and win. Just stay there, keep working from the bottom. Keep it closed, keep it closed. Let's trip and wrestle up. All the way up, all the way up. All right, let's go. All the way, all the way, don't stop. Don't stop. At a boy, don't stop. Hey, score in here, score in here. That's a good position, I like it. That's a boy, hey, that's it. Hey, come up, it's two. Get that foot flat. Nice, Alejandro, good work. Stand on top here. That's it, you're gonna get two now. You're gonna get two, you got the points. 15 seconds, you gotta stay on top, you win. That a boy, way to dig deep, Joe, way to dig deep. Hey, good shit. Just gotta get your heart rate down. Hey, you're gonna have to be tough to win these. You're gonna have to dig deep. That's one of the hardest matches right there. Okay, go over in the bullpen, take your time. <laughs> The, the last match was the tough, tough match. He's good. One of the, definitely one of the guys that could have won. This guy, take him out. Okay? This is the time you're going to have to sh dig deep, show everybody how tough you are. You're sick, fuck it. It is what it is. Yeah. You're going to win. Yeah. Fucking dig deep, let's go. Take this guy out. Let's go, hey, The shorter time you're out there, the more time you get the rest. Hard hand fight, Drew. Hey, just take the two. It's tight, it's tight, it's tight. Hey. Good work. Hey. Good. Hey, much more time. Get hydrated again. Rest. Just get your heart rate down. That's two, baby. We got the points. Good stuff, Joe. We got the two here. Same thing. That's two again. Two again, Joe. No triangle, no Uma Pata. Head up, Joe. No triangle, no Uma Pata. Head up, Joe. Under hooks. Get that knee down. Staple, staple. You got it. We're on, we're on. That a boy, don't stop. Good, breathe, hey, you're good, we're up 4-0. Be smart, be smart. No leg entanglements, that's it. Nice pass, Joe. Stick it, stick it, top leg. Close, you're gonna get an advantage. Keep the elbow tight, left elbow, there we go. Hey, you look good, Alejandro, you look good, baby. He's tired. Focus, focus, focus. No time to rest. Left knee over, left knee over. We're passing, passing. Watch your back. Good throw. Hey, be smart. Focus here, focus. You gotta dig deep. You gotta dig deep. You're a machine. Tap. Hey. And a boy, Joe, it's your time. It's your time. Hey. hey. Let's go. It's your time. Fuck being sick. You're gonna dig deep. You gotta focus every second. Yes, sir. It's tight, it's tight, it's tight. Use it to come on top. a boy. Nice, David. Nice, Joe. Keep it tight, keep it tight. 
Triangles, no arm bars. Be smart here. Get the man drop. Good. Soon as it opens, hey, you can stay there. He's got to open it. You're good. Watch your left arm. Keep it on the same side. 419, buddy. 419. Be ready. Hey, just be smart. Be smart. sign up and you show up there's no excuse so you know this shit sucks and you know I'm feeling not too well but that's just how the game goes sometimes and if you're ready to show up you gotta be ready to roll so you know that's just how it goes I learned some things about myself today I dug deep even before I even rolled and I was able to get through a lot of adversity during my first second and you know, third matches and uh, you know obviously I want to win and you know, one small mistake in the closed guard and it cost me my match to get on the podium. But Jiu Jitsu is a long hustle, so I'm here for the long haul. And I'm purple belt, one day I'll be brown, one day I'll be black and I'll be ready. So can't complain, I got Heath Pettigo behind me and I got a great group of people behind me to just lift me up. I fought my ass off today and that's how it goes sometimes. Sharp. Say what's up. <laughs> the champ right here. We gotta get you more camera friendly, huh? You're gonna be on the big camera. You're gonna be on ESPN. <laughs> wrestling team is doing incredible. Our little kids team are making huge waves in Mount Vernon. It's making huge waves in Illinois. And the high school is just blowing up. We've got over 50 kids after starting the season last year with four. Now we have 50 full women's team, full men's team, and uh, they're all winning. Having that wrestling program under our roof, I'm really excited to have that responsibility. Watching the kids kind of be molded into you know, like junior athletes and like better people, I think it's going to save several lives in our town. I think that they'll reach people that never would have gotten reached. I'm obviously hoping that most of these will funnel into our adult program. You know, we're still very young, so knowing that we're going to add them you know, in the next five years, I just think it's going to wreak havoc on the jiu-jitsu competition and wrestling community. When Michael came to our team, two separate college coaches reached out to me and said, I love the Daisy Fresh show. I love the program. If you want to keep that, don't let Michael Pixley be a part of that. He's poison, he's uncoachable, he's mean. He'll run the program. And let me tell you, these guys who said this couldn't have been more wrong about the guy. He's an incredible student. He's a great friend, great teammate. He is a major asset, not just as a competitor, but as a coach in our gym, man. You know, he has this reputation to be this mean, badass dude, and uh, it's really funny watching him with the kids, man, because he's like electric working with them, and they, and they love him. I'm really proud of Michael Pixley, man. He's given everything just to be so great at wrestling his whole life, and he lost track of his own happiness becoming incredible. When we found him, he was a lost soul, and I'm happy for him, not only just to be a, a world champion in this sport, but He's a genuinely lifted up personality, everything. He's just happy and he's, what he's doing for these kids is tenfold, we can't, we can't even explain it. And uh, I'm just happy for him. I'm happy to see him be successful in jiu-jitsu and he's only gonna continue to terrorize everyone that he has to go against. <laughs> 
At the end of the day, when you just step back and look at it and how many people's lives are changing, it's really just a fulfilling feeling. Just seeing all the kids smile and seeing them do great things and accomplish their goals really means the world to me. So helping them being a part of their success and watching them grow, I don't know, it's just something I always dreamed about. He has been mentoring me since the day I met him without me realizing it. And now I've reached a point in my life where I'm now paying it forward to Mount Vernon and these kids. And uh, it's very special. And uh, what he's done for me is uh, something that you can't buy. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot that I have to now be responsible for. But uh, I have no problem doing that. I can't, I can't explain the, the way I feel, but I know, I know in my heart I'm in, headed in the right direction. And my life, it's, uh, it's incredible. And I can't be any happier. So Heath, what does it uh, feel like to see the gym like this? This was a really special place. The atmosphere in here, it was so small. It was just so loud and there was so much energy and anyone who ever came to train, you know, it was like a memorable experience. So it's like a bittersweet type thing. There's not gonna be anything like training in that laundry, man. You get to like wake up next to these guys every day. You're bound to build a bond with them. So, and then the place that holds that bond, you're not going to get to experience it the same. I moved here in a really tough spot in my life. The Wilt Seas, you know, Spatch, George, you know, the the list goes on. And so, uh, you know, it's it's bittersweet in the fact that you know this is like your childhood home that you grew up in. You know, and you got to leave. That's like going to be a once in a lifetime era over there, man. It's something that I think that when we're 50 or 60, it's what we're going to be talking about to our kids and grandkids. Like living there was physically and mentally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. More than anything I did in the military, anything that living there was, was brutal. So it built me up as a, a, as a person. That thing, you know, that's something that I attached to huge changes in my life. You know, I spent fucking three or four years living in the cold gym and I learned so much for that. Like, I'm, I'm a completely different person. I'm 100% better, you know? And uh, learning how to tough it out and fucking understand that, I don't know, a lot of shit doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Whether you fucking have to eat fancy food or a warm blanket or a warm bed. When I first started in there, I was struggling in my life. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know who the fuck I was, you know? I didn't have any friends in my life. I had nothing. Living in the gym and being around Heath and learning like what it means to be a fucking better person, to be a good teammate, to be a good friend, and all this life shit that, that no one talks about. This is where people started coming to become a part of something that was huge. And uh, so this building will always have a, a really special place in my heart. So a lot of people, it's just a uh, old piece of shit building, but to me, it, uh, it saved more lives, including mine, than well, anything else I've ever been a part of. So I'll always miss it, no matter what. I've been waiting on this opportunity a long time, you know. I'm very grateful for it. I'm glad it went the way it did because look at him. He has the bravado of someone who had it coming. I whipped that ass. <laughs> you know, I was watching some anime a few months ago. I turned on some Afro Samurai and I was just really digging the fro, you know what I mean? I'm gonna take the cowboy hat back though once I get my cornrows and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But right now I'm on my black dynamite shit. Yeah. About to go down, fuck it. First hat, first time in Austin. We're, we're checking shit down, off of, look. hey, fuck it, I'm gonna send it.
Shit, I'm down for life now. Turn up then. I need eight medium orders of orange chicken if you can do that. She said American food tastes great. I've gone through so many fucking ups and downs. For a long time, I, I've lost. Everyone thinks you can win, but you. Let's fucking win this thing. That's it, that's it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I've thought before where I came from would be a hindrance on what I wanted to do. I want people to know where I'm from that that's not true.